Numbers chapter 33 verses 40 through 56. And King Arad the Canaanite, which dwelt in the south in the land of Canaan, heard of the coming of the children of Israel. And they departed from Mount Hor, and pitched in Zalmona. And they departed from Zalmona, and pitched in Punan. And they departed from Punan, and pitched in Oboth. And they departed from Oboth, and pitched in Ijebarim, in the border of Moab. And they departed from him, and pitched in Dibongad. And they removed from Dibongad, and encamped in Amon Diblathame. And they removed from Amon Diblathame, and pitched in the mountains of Abarim, before Nebo. And they departed from the mountains of Abarim, and pitched in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho. And they pitched by Jordan, from Beth Yisamoth even unto Abelshittim in the plains of Moab. And the Lord spake unto Moses in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye are passed over Jordan into the land of Canaan, then ye shall drive out all the inhabitants of the land from before you, and destroy all their pictures, and destroy all their molten images, and quite pluck down all their high places. And ye shall dispossess the inhabitants of the land, and dwell therein, for I have given you the land to possess it. And ye shall divide the land by lot for an inheritance among your families, and to the more ye shall give the more inheritance, and to the fewer ye shall give the less inheritance, every man's inheritance shall be in the place where his lot falleth, according to the tribes of your fathers ye shall inherit. But if ye will not drive out the inhabitants of the land from before you, then it shall come to pass, that those which ye let remain of them shall be pricks in your eyes, and thorns in your sides, and shall vex you in the land wherein ye dwell. Moreover it shall come to pass, that I shall do unto you, as I thought to do unto them. Numbers chapter 34. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye come into the land of Canaan, this is the land that shall fall unto you for an inheritance, even the land of Canaan with the coasts thereof. Then your south quarter shall be from the wilderness of Zin along by the coast of Edom, and your south border shall be the outmost coast of the Salt Sea eastward. And your border shall turn from the south to the ascent of Akrabim, and pass on to Zin, and the going forth thereof shall be from the south to Kadesh Barnea, and shall go on to Hazaratar, and pass on to Asmon. And the border shall fetch a compass from Asmon unto the river of Egypt, and the goings out of it shall be at the sea. And as for the western border, ye shall even have the great sea for a border, this shall be your west border. And this shall be your north border, from the great sea ye shall point out for you Mount Hor. From Mount Hor ye shall point out your border unto the entrance of Hamath, and the goings forth of the border shall be to Zadad. And the border shall go on to Ziphron, and the goings out of it shall be at Hazarenan, this shall be your north border. And ye shall point out your east border from Hazarenan to Shephem. And the coast shall go down from Shephem to Riblah, on the east side of Ain, and the border shall descend, and shall reach unto the side of the sea of Kinnereth eastward. And the border shall go down to Jordan, and the goings out of it shall be at the salt sea, this shall be your land with the coasts thereof round about. And Moses commanded the children of Israel, saying, This is the land which ye shall inherit by lot, which the Lord commanded to give unto the nine tribes, and to the half-tribe. For the tribe of the children of Reuben according to the house of their fathers, and the tribe of the children of Gad according to the house of their fathers, have received their inheritance, and half the tribe of Manasseh have received their inheritance. The two tribes and the half-tribe have received their inheritance on this side Jordan near Jericho eastward, toward the sunrising. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, These are the names of the men which shall divide the land unto you, Eleazar the priest, and Joshua the son of Nun. And ye shall take one prince of every tribe, to divide the land by inheritance. And the names of the men are these, of the tribe of Judah, Caleb the son of Jephunneh. And of the tribe of the children of Simeon, Shemuel the son of Amahud. Of the tribe of Benjamin, Elidad the son of Chislon. And the prince of the tribe of the children of Dan, Bukai the son of Yogli. The prince of the children of Joseph, for the tribe of the children of Manasseh, Haniel the son of Ephod. And the prince of the tribe of the children of Ephraim, Kemuel the son of Shiftan. And the prince of the tribe of the children of Zebulun, Elizaphan the son of Parnak. And the prince of the tribe of the children of Issachar, Paltiel the son of Azan. And the prince of the tribe of the children of Asher, Ahihud the son of Shelemi. And the prince of the tribe of the children of Naphtali, Pedahel the son of Amahud. These are they whom the Lord commanded to divide the inheritance unto the children of Israel in the land of Canaan. Numbers chapter 35. And the Lord spake unto Moses in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho, saying, Command the children of Israel, 
that they give unto the Levites of the inheritance of their possession cities to dwell in, and ye shall give also unto the Levites suburbs for the cities round about them. And the cities shall they have to dwell in, and the suburbs of them shall be for their cattle, and for their goods, and for all their beasts. And the suburbs of the cities, which ye shall give unto the Levites, shall reach from the wall of the city and outward a thousand cubits round about. And ye shall measure from without the city on the east side two thousand cubits, and on the south side two thousand cubits, and on the west side two thousand cubits, and on the north side two thousand cubits, and the city shall be in the midst, this shall be to them the suburbs of the cities. And among the cities which ye shall give unto the Levites there shall be six cities for refuge, which ye shall appoint for the manslayer, that he may flee thither, and to them ye shall add forty and two cities. So all the cities which ye shall give to the Levites shall be forty and eight cities, them shall ye give with their suburbs. And the cities which ye shall give shall be of the possession of the children of Israel, from them that have many ye shall give many, but from them that have few ye shall give few, every one shall give of his cities unto the Levites according to his inheritance which he inheriteth. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye be come over Jordan into the land of Canaan. Then ye shall appoint you cities to be cities of refuge for you, that the slayer may flee thither, which killeth any person at unawares. And they shall be unto you cities for refuge from the avenger, that the manslayer die not, until he stand before the congregation in judgment. And of these cities which ye shall give six cities shall ye have for refuge. Ye shall give three cities on this side Jordan, and three cities shall ye give in the land of Canaan, which shall be cities of refuge. These six cities shall be a refuge, both for the children of Israel, and for the stranger, and for the sojourner among them, that every one that killeth any person unawares may flee thither. And if he smite him with an instrument of iron, so that he die, he is a murderer, the murderer shall surely be put to death. And if he smite him with throwing a stone, wherewith he may die, and he die, he is a murderer, the murderer shall surely be put to death. Or if he smite him with an hand weapon of wood, wherewith he may die, and he die, he is a murderer, the murderer shall surely be put to death. The revenger of blood himself shall slay the murderer, when he meeteth him, he shall slay him. But if he thrust him of hatred, or hurl at him by laying of weight, that he die. Or in enmity smite him with his hand, that he die, he that smote him shall surely be put to death, for he is a murderer, the revenger of blood shall slay the murderer, when he meeteth him. But if he thrust him suddenly without enmity, or have cast upon him any thing without laying of weight, or with any stone, wherewith a man may die, seeing him not, and cast it upon him, that he die, and was not his enemy, neither sought his harm. Then the congregation shall judge between the slayer and the revenger of blood according to these judgments. And the congregation shall deliver the slayer out of the hand of the revenger of blood, and the congregation shall restore him to the city of his refuge, whither he was fled, and he shall abide in it unto the death of the high priest, which was anointed with the holy oil. But if the slayer shall at any time come without the border of the city of his refuge, whither he was fled. And the revenger of blood find him without the borders of the city of his refuge, and the revenger of blood kill the slayer, he shall not be guilty of blood. Because he should have remained in the city of his refuge until the death of the high priest, but after the death of the high priest the slayer shall return into the land of his possession. So these things shall be for a statute of judgment unto you throughout your generations and all your dwellings. Whoso killeth any person, the murderer shall be put to death by the mouth of witnesses, but one witness shall not testify against any person to cause him to die. Moreover ye shall take no satisfaction for the life of a murderer, which is guilty of death, but he shall be surely put to death. And ye shall take no satisfaction for him that is fled to the city of his refuge, that he should come again to dwell in the land, until the death of the priest. So ye shall not pollute the land wherein ye are, for blood it defileth the land and the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein, but by the blood of him that shed it. Defile not therefore the land which ye shall inhabit, wherein I dwell, for I the Lord dwell among the children of Israel. Luke chapter 5 verses 12 through 28. And it came to pass, when he was in a certain city, behold a man full of leprosy, who seeing Jesus fell on his face, and besought him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And he put forth his hand, and touched him, saying, I will, be thou clean. And immediately the leprosy departed from him. And he charged him to tell no man, but go, and show thyself to the priest, and offer for thy cleansing, 
according as Moses commanded, for a testimony unto them. But so much the more went there a fame abroad of him, and great multitudes came together to hear, and to be healed by him of their infirmities. And he withdrew himself into the wilderness, and prayed. And it came to pass on a certain day, as he was teaching, that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee, and Judea, and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. And, behold, men brought in a bed a man which was taken with a palsy, and they sought means to bring him in, and to lay him before him. And when they could not find by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went upon the housetop, and let him down through the tiling with his couch into the midst before Jesus. And when he saw their faith, he said unto him, Man, thy sins are forgiven thee. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this which speaketh blasphemies? Who can forgive sins, but God alone? But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answering said unto them, What reason ye in your hearts? Whether is easier, to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Rise up and walk? But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power upon earth to forgive sins, he said unto the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, and take up thy couch, and go into thine house. And immediately he rose up before them, and took up that whereon he lay, and departed to his own house, glorifying God. And they were all amazed, and they glorified God, and were filled with fear, saying, We have seen strange things today. And after these things he went forth, and saw a publican, named Levi, sitting at the receipt of custom, and he said unto him, Follow me. And he left to all, rose up, and followed him. Psalms chapter 65. Praise waiteth for thee, O God, in Sion, and unto thee shall the vow be performed. O thou that hearest prayer, unto thee shall all flesh come. Iniquities prevail against me, as for our transgressions, thou shalt purge them away. Blessed is the man whom thou choosest, and causest to approach unto thee, that he may dwell in thy courts, we shall be satisfied with the goodness of thy house, even of thy holy temple. By terrible things and righteousness wilt thou answer us, O God of our salvation, who art the confidence of all the ends of the earth, and of them that are afar off upon the sea. Which by his strength setteth fast the mountains, being girded with power. Which stilleth the noise of the seas, the noise of their waves, and the tumult of the people. They also that dwell in the uttermost parts are afraid of thy tokens, thou makest the outgoings of the morning and evening to rejoice. Thou visitest the earth, and waterest it, thou greatly enrichest it with the river of God, which is full of water, thou preparest them corn, when thou hast so provided for it. Thou waterest the ridges thereof abundantly, thou settlest the furrows thereof, thou makest it soft with showers, thou blessest the springing thereof. Thou crownest the year with thy goodness, and thy paths drop fatness. They drop upon the pastures of the wilderness, and the little hills rejoice on every side. The pastures are clothed with flocks, the valleys also are covered over with corn, they shout for joy, they also sing. Proverbs chapter 11 verse 23. The desire of the righteous is only good, but the expectation of the wicked is wrath.